In this video, we're going to talk about the more advanced uh, pull damage and pull decay modeling functionality added in version 4.7 of Ocal Pro. Um, in previous versions, what you were able to do was determine a effective ground line capacity based on uh, arbitrary um, damage modeling. In this version, what you're able to do is actually damage, actually model the damage. So, for example, if I go on this pull and I say, okay, I'm going to add some damage or decay, and I'm going to say I've got a woodpecker hole, and it's two inches wide uh, inside, and it's uh, three inches deep, and like so. I'm going to slide this up a little bit so we can see it. What it actually shows me is, okay, this is what my damage looks like. Now what I can do is I can say yeah, let's, let's be a little more interesting. Let's make it a woodpecker nest instead. So here we have a situation where we have a small entry into the nest and uh, the, the total depth is 3 inches. The depth of the interior nest part is 2 inches and the entry hole in the, in the side of the pole is 1 inch and the, end, the position is, let's call it, 18 feet above the ground. Now, if I go and look at what result that damage has on the capacity of the pole, you'll see that in my bending moment capacity chart, there's a little jog right there, and that is the point at which the pole's capacity to resist um, bending is, in fact, diminished at that height and then that damage carries up to a point where the pole's natural taper would then trump that amount and again we see our normal damage and decay and we can make that a little bit more alarming uh, I don't know why you'd want to but let's say that in actuality it's something like four inches deep and four inches wide okay and now you can see okay well we have a pretty severe amount of damage I mean that's a pretty good size pole. It's taken up a pretty good amount of the pole's capacity. Similarly, I can say, what's my vertical buckling um, capacity? And again, you see my vertical capacity has this pretty severe jog in it at that point because there's a tendency to buckle where that void is in the pole. And then we transfer that capacity up. I mean, it, in, in actuality, th the the individual segments of the pole above this height would have a capacity greater than that, but the overall pole can't have any more capacity than the least amount of capacity as you go down the shaft. And so you see this step effect as the pole's vertical capacity is in fact reduced and then that amount is transferred up the pole. And I can have one or more damages on a pole. I can have as many as I want. We have uh, quite a few types. We have uh, vehicle scrapes, saw cuts, mower cuts, exposed pockets, and so on and so forth. But let's do an interesting thing. Let us take and and we'll go back to our view here. And I'm going to take and I'm going to copy this same damage to a point just above uh, that point on the pole. And I'm going to go ahead and set its rotation to 45 degrees. So now I have two damages very close to each other, not exactly at the same height. So this one, one was at 18 feet, and one was at 18 feet, and let's call it 18.125 feet. Okay, so now when I go ahead and I do my um, damage and decay analysis, what the system does is say, okay, as I move my way up the pole, at some point, in fact, both of these damages affect the pole. And so for purposes of evaluation of that particular slice, I merge the two damages together. And then as, as I continue on up the pole, I reach a point where, well, uh, really only the topmost one is in fact the, the uh, limiting factor and the one below it is, is not taken into account. But I can uh, accentuate that fact by saying, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and make this 19 feet let's say, and let's go ahead and make these slightly less severe, so 2 and 2. And we'll go back to 
this one and we'll make it 2.5 and 2. And now if we go back and do our damage analysis, uh, tools, damage and decay, and you can see, okay, now I just have two individual damages. There is no, they're sufficiently far apart that they don't influence, they don't aggregate with each other and uh, cause a composite damage that's even higher. So that's uh, damage and decay. And uh, again, there are a number of different types of damage and decay, um, saw cuts, mower cuts, um, heart rot conditions, you know, so the pole is hollow in the middle, and so on and so forth. And so what you can do is accurately um, measure, in fact, the and model the, uh, the damage on a pole.